Hey guys, welcome. My name is Artur and today I would like to show you how you can mint your very own NFT using ERC-1155 smart contract. So for those who might not know, ERC-1155 is a standard for creating smart contracts that can uh, hold information about fungible and non-fungible tokens. I think it's quite popular standard. It's currently supported by all major marketplaces. So at the end of this video, I will show you that you can deploy your very own NFT and then just use it on the open sea. So uh, here we have the code of our smart contract. This is the Remix IDE. If you are not familiar with it, I highly recommend you to check some of my previous videos in which you can find the description how you can uh, write the smart contracts here. So I will not cover the basics of it right now. Um, so you can get back to this video. Um, and right now I will just show you how to uh, mint your own tokens. So we have here the contract and the contract is called game items and right now we want to extend this smart contract so this smart contract is ERC 1155 and of course we can go to the docs we can check the code of the smart contract and just copy it here or better we are able to just import um, the library uh, inside our Remix IDE so we can uh, type here import uh, and then we can just import uh, some smart contracts some solidity code from the GitHub. And here we have the GitHub of the organization called Open Zeppelin. And this organization has well tested and standardized contracts. So if something is in the repository of the Open Zeppelin, you can be sure that all the code there is audited and checked by the crypto community. So here we can import the contract, which is the ERC 1155. Of course, if you do the, um, the import, then you would see here that inside the workspace in the Remix IDE, you have the access to all stuff that you are using. So you can just check the stuff um, that you have here, like token ERC-1155. And here you can actually check the implementation of uh, these uh, smart contracts. So everything is available for you um, here. However, right now we will just focus on our uh, simple smart contract. So we don't have to bother uh, with the code. And whenever we have the contract like that, and we want to take the code of the ERC-1155 into our contract, we have to inherit from it. So it's like in just in object oriented programming, here we are inheriting our contract. And here we will specify some constants, which would be just variables um, that for instance, Charizard is uh, zero, Ivysaur and other Pokemons have other IDs. So this this would be just for testing. So so we can see that okay, the NFT with the ID uh, zero is actually Charizard and the other IDs um, are different NFTs that we will mint. So we have the contract and the game items is ERC 1155 and right now we have the constructor and here uh, we are just creating minting uh, because in the crypto blockchain world whenever you create a new nft it's called mint so um, here we are using uh, the function which actually is uh, implemented inside the standard of the erc 1155 and inside the constructor we are minting um, for tokens inside and one token is Charizard the second one is Ivysaur and here we are specifying how much initial amount we want to have of the specific token so we're gonna have um, the smart contract which holds information about four NFTs and uh, the first NFT is Charizard it has one uh, 100 copies and we have also three other pokemons which are represented um, with that we have here 100 copies and here is interesting thing just deployed um, to the ipfs and ipfs is a decentralized storage which i will cover in some other videos on this channel so usually the nfts are represented just by the json so we have here on the ipfs uh, my uh, directory and this directory holds information about the token that has 
has the ID 0. And here is just the JSON, which represents some attributes of our uh, NFT. And the NFT has ID 6, has the name Charizard and the image of um, the token. So uh, any marketplace or anybody in the decentralized network can uh, just check um, the, the meta file of our uh, token and just get this data and use it, for instance, on the marketplace, which I will show you in the minute. So we have here the zero. Uh, under one.json we have different Pokemon and right now whenever we uh, deploy the smart contract then this constructor will mint for us uh, four uh, tokens and right now let's see um, what will happen uh, if we just uh, save the file and uh, then we can try to deploy it first I will deploy the contract into the memory so I will just have here the environment Java JavaScript virtual machine here we you have to be always sure that that you are deploying the right contract because you can see that we have some smart contracts from the open zeppelin and the common mistake is that people are deploying for instance uh, the code from the open zeppelin contracts however we don't want to deploy uh, something from the github we just want to deploy our contract because here we have the constructor and here we have the information about the pokemons that we want to actually mint so if i click here deploy uh, then you would see uh, um, that you have the deployed contract here and you can see that we have um, some uh, functions that are actually not implemented in our code but they are implemented in the ERC 1155 so I will copy the address of the owner of the smart contract so this address deployed this this smart contract and here we can just type the address provide the ID of the token and if we click um, call uh, then we see that okay uh, this address has 100 uh, copies of that and let's copy some different address and I will copy here the different address and of course if we would call it then you would see that we don't have any NFTs for that owner so so only the minter right now have the 100 uh, copies so let's try to actually send some copies because obviously we want to have the NFTs not only to to have them but we want to of course transfer them so right now we can uh, just uh, select that okay we want to uh, send it from uh, this guy to for instance uh, this this address we can copy it here we can specify that we want to move the token with id 1 and we can specify that we want to send 15 copies here in the safe transfer form we can also provide the data uh, I will use here some garbage because we are not using the data for anything. And you can see that if I click transact, uh, then we're going to transfer um, the 15 copies from this address to that address. So if we're going to check the balance right now, you see that after uh, running the safe transfer from uh, this address holds just um, less copies of the Pokemon and of course if we take this address and check it again then you would see that this guy has the 15 uh, copies of that uh, token. So that's very easy right we have the ERC 1155 smart contract and we are able to uh, check some information about uh, who is owning what basically however uh, we have also the built-in function which is called URI and if we provide here the token ID one and just use it, then you can see that we have the string which returns us the address under which we can check the information about the NFT. However, this format is not supported by OpenSea. So by uh, OpenSea wants to uh, have the URI function to which you are passing one and then the OpenSea uh, gets basically the URI under which they can find information about the certain NFT. So right now we're gonna override the URI function so it works a bit different and uh, in order to do that we're gonna need helper functions uh, to work with the strings and then once we have the strings um, util uh, imported 
uh, then actually we can override the function. So right now we are writing the own implementation of the URI function and we want to take the token ID and then we want to concatenate first the base URL. So this is the URL to my directory on the IPFS. It can be any uh, domain in the internet. And here I can provide that, okay, I want to um, change the integer to the string. So that's why I had to um, take uh, this this library and I'm able to um, change integer into the string and then I can use abi.encode and packed which will just produce the concatenated uh, string. So instead of um, here just id.json, I would see the past parameter. So it works on the open C. So right now I will just uh, save it and we don't need the old uh, version of this uh, smart contract. Of course, we want to recompile it and deploy it again. And if I deploy it again and use the URI function, here you see that now we are having the URI that is actually supported by OpenSea. So this means that we can uh, try to deploy our code into the test network. So uh, I'm going to use my MetaMask wallet on the Rinkeby test network. And here I have some test account that we're going to try on the OpenSea. And OpenSea is a marketplace where you can just put any of your tokens and trade these tokens and uh, with other users. So uh, we want to put our smart contract into the um, test net so OpenSea can grab it. Uh, so um, I will use the injected web tree. Uh, here I will make sure that I'm in the Rinkeby test network and right now um, you can see that we have here the Rinkeby uh, network and we have exactly the same uh, address that I have here inside the MetaMask. And now I can click deploy uh, and now we are not using any longer JavaScript virtual machine, we are using the test network and we can just click here the confirm and after some minute uh, our smart contract would be deployed into the um, into the network. So you see that right now we have um, again our smart contract deployed and this address is here is the address of our smart contract. So after deployment uh, the, the smart contract is on the this address and this address is of course inside the Rinkeby test network. So let's go to the OpenSea and right now I'm logged in as this user into the OpenSea and if I refresh now we would need to see that we have some uh, NFTs and of course it takes time for um, for OpenSea to, to take that information but you see that we have here the address of this smart contract. So here we have uh, the smart contract address and you can see that we have the token ID with the zero and if we change it to one uh, then you can see that we have also information about the IVs hour. So this is our uh, smart contract which holds information about NFTs and we have here for instance the Charizard. The Charizard has the token ID um, zero and we can see that this token is owned by me and I have 100 copies and if we do some transaction completely outside of the open sea uh, like here we can use the safe transfer from and let's say I want to use my address and I want to move it to completely different address for instance I would take other test account here so I will change it and here I will move the Charizard and I want to move 10 copies and I want to put here nothing. And now I'm again asked by the MetaMask that if I want to move my token. And now the token is moved and let's see what happens here on the OpenSea. And OpenSea of course needs a bit of time to synchronize with the on-chain data because right now uh, we just created the transaction that was sent into the um, Rinkeby test network, but here the OpenSea uh, is interacting directly with the blockchain network. So they are relying on the information that is written on the on chain. And now you see 
that I'm owning actually 90 copies, the 100 was total, and the Charizard right now is owned by two people. So it's the one address that, that I minted the NFT originally, and this is the second address. So right now you know that um, you can very simple way uh, deploy ERC-1155 smart contract using even your web browser. You just have to customize how the uh, URI function from ERC-1155 smart contract works. And then uh, after just small adjustment, you can start using your uh, token on the OpenSea or any other uh, decentralized marketplace for the NFTs. Uh, so if you are interested in NFTs, just paste some questions uh, down below or let me know what kind of NFTs you are working with. Um, if you have some questions about decentralized storage and how to store metadata about your NFTs, you can also ask questions down below because right now I'm preparing some new stuff for this channel and I would like to cover some more advanced stuff with the NFTs and show you how you can um, mint the stuff not from the Remix IDE but from your JavaScript code. So if it's something interesting to you, uh, let me know. And thank you for attention and see you on this channel.